Hey, what's going on guys? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today we're going to be taking a look at the all new Raspberry Pi 4 8 GB model. Now, when you compare this to the 2 GB model or the 4 GB model, or even the discontinued 1 GB model, not much has changed here except for the amount of RAM and USB Type-C power management. They also moved around a few small power management chips on the board, but keep in mind the cases that you've been using for your Raspberry Pi 4 will work with the 8GB model. Now I'm super excited about the new Raspberry Pi 4 8GB model, but before we get this out of the box, I did want to mention that this video is sponsored by Micro Center. They were kind enough to ship one of these over really fast to me. I was trying to get a hold of one before launch, but unfortunately I just couldn't get one shipped out. So yeah, if you're not familiar with Micro Center, then you really should be if you're a tech enthusiast. They have real brick and mortar stores that you can walk in, you can test out the panels if you need to buy an LCD, you can see the cases, you can put your hands on the product before you purchase it. But in the last couple years they've really gotten into the SBC maker board market, which is something I'm really big into. But either way, I'm going to leave links to Micro Center's website so you can find the closest store and you definitely need to get in there, especially if you're into tech. All right, so let's go ahead and get the new Raspberry Pi 4 8 gigabyte model out of the box. This one is coming in a bit more expensive than the 2 or the 4 gigabyte model. The 8 gigabyte model goes for 75 US dollars, making it pretty much the most expensive Raspberry Pi ever made. Now, at first glance, this looks exactly the same as the 1, 2, or 4 gigabyte model of the Raspberry Pi 4, but there are some changes on the board itself, and one of the best ways to tell which Raspberry Pi 4 you have is looking at the RAM chip. Because each one will obviously have a different amount of RAM, the RAM chip will be different on the board. So for the 1 gigabyte model, which I believe has been discontinued, it'll be 4HB MGCJ. 2 gigabyte D9WHZ. 4 gigabyte will be D9WHV. And the new 8 gigabyte model will be D9ZCL. And if you already have your Raspberry Pi up and running, you can always go to the task manager or open up terminal and type in free. It'll tell you how much RAM you have on the board. So we still have the same exact layout. We have two USB 2.0 ports, two USB 3.0 ports, our full-size gigabit Ethernet, 40 GPIO pins. We have our CSI connector, DSI connector, two micro HDMIs, and our USB Type-C power in. The CPU has also stayed the same. We still have that BCM 2711. It's a quad-core Cortex A72 ARM CPU at 1.5 gigahertz, but we can still overclock up to 2.147, I believe. And we still get that 802.11ac Wi-Fi and Bluetooth 5.0. So all in all, this is basically the same Raspberry Pi 4 with more RAM. And I'm going to go ahead and throw it out there right now. If you're just doing emulation with your Raspberry Pi 4, stick with what you have, be it the 2 gigabyte or the 4 gigabyte model. Adding more RAM here is not going to help out with emulation, but in a desktop environment, this could definitely help out in the long run. And now that they've released the 64-bit Raspberry Pi OS, we can take full advantage of the 8 gigabytes built into this new Pi. And before we get into a little bit of testing, I just wanted to give you a quick comparison here. At first glance, these look like the exact same Raspberry Pis. On the left hand side, we have the 8 gigabyte model. On the right hand side, we have the 4 gigabyte model. And if we look close enough, some of the power components have been swapped around on the board, and this mainly has to do with the power input to the board itself. They've moved the switch mode power supply closer to the USB Type-C port on the new board, and the new 8 gigabyte model can actually take advantage of higher current USB Type-C power supplies. In the past, we were kind of limited to around 3 amps here, and this will definitely help out with using external drives through USB. We can up that USB current without having to worry about underpowering the CPU on the board. And the final change that I'm noticing here is some additional silk screening on the bottom of the Raspberry Pi 4 8 gigabyte model, and that's about it. Now I want to move over to some testing. I'm going to be using the new Raspberry Pi OS 64-bit version, and in this video I'm not going to be running any GPU or CPU benchmarks because we have the same exact thing in the other Raspberry Pi 4s. What I really want to see is what it takes to max out this 8 gigabytes of RAM in this new Pi. Alright, so here we are with the latest version of Raspberry Pi OS. I'm going to head over here and just open up a task manager. What I wanted to do here was just see how much RAM is used on a day-to-day -day basis. Now, having this much RAM will definitely help out in the long run. If you have your Raspberry Pi on for a few days, it will cache different applications that you regularly use inside of the RAM and allow you to launch them faster. You can also set up a RAM disk, but after you reboot, all of that's lost, or you can set it up so it automatically creates a RAM disk when you boot your Raspberry Pi up. And that will significantly help in performance mainly launching applications and things like that. But for this test here, we're only sitting at 187 megabytes right now, and we have a lot to go. So I'm gonna try some of the heavier duty stuff in this video. 
we're going to launch GIMP. And I'm going to load up an 8K file. We'll just see how much this takes up. And then I just really want to hit this up with a lot of different applications and see where we are by the end. GIMP is really good about allocating memory, so this isn't going to take up much, but we'll go ahead and select a color. Cut that out. And we're up to 1.5 gigs already just cutting this out. Now I'm going to leave this running in the background. We'll cut this out soon. It'll drop back down because it doesn't need to use that memory to cache it anymore. We're going to leave that dormant. Now I'm going to head over to a video editor. We'll do one shot. And I've actually been having a couple issues with one shot crashing with this 64 bit version. So hopefully I can make it through here. But this is an application that will use a lot of RAM. I do have some video files over here. And we'll go to Downloads, and I'll load them up. I'm going to fast forward this just so we can get a better look. And exporting is where it will really use that RAM, so we'll export video. And this is probably going to jump up to around 2.8 gigabytes of use. And remember, we still have GIMP here running in the background. Simple video editing, simple image editing, the 4 gigabyte model is going to work fine. But if we look here, even if we were using the 2 gigabyte model, we would still be using that swap here. We're going to launch some browsers. All right, so we got four browsers open up. This is not running in HD right now. I could jump it up, but it's just not gonna play correctly. We have a video exporting, and I also have GIMP up and running with the selected color still on. We're sitting at 3.1. So yeah, we're getting close to the point where we need at least four gigs of RAM. Let's see what else we could do here. We'll go ahead and open up LibreOffice. I'm just running this test here because uh, I really wanted to see if it would be worth getting the 8 gig over the 4. And so far, I mean, as much as I do on my Raspberry Pi, I could stick with the 4 gigabyte model. But the 8 gigabyte model would definitely be great for different projects like building a home NAS or a home server or adding several together in a cluster for a supercomputer. But I'd say for everyday use, so far, I mean, we'd be sitting pretty with the 4 gigabyte model. We haven't been able to break that yet. And I'm sure I could if I opened up 50 Chrome tabs to different websites and things like that. But in reality, not a lot of people are going to be doing that. And one of the main things that's definitely killing us from opening up more applications to keep running into RAM is the CPU. I mean, we're maxing this CPU out with that video rendering in the background. And especially if I opened up Blender here, well, if I ran a benchmark with Blender. So I'll head over to my downloads and I do have a benchmark. I just want to crack four gigs before I get out of here. Okay, so we finally hit seven gigabytes of RAM here. I have three instances of this 8K photo here. It's an eight megabyte photo, selecting color in each one of them. I'm also running a Blender Blenchmark. It's rendering this BMW right now. I am rendering a 1080p 60 FPS video using one shot. And I have 31 tabs in Chromium opened up on YouTube. And that allows us to hit the seven gigabyte mark in RAM. Overall, I will tell you that a lot of people aren't gonna be doing this, but uh. I guess it is possible to pretty much max out your RAM on an 8 gigabyte Raspberry Pi 4. It does take a while, and like I mentioned, 99.9% .9 of people out there are never going to do this, but it's possible. 
So in the end, the Raspberry Pi 4 8GB model is definitely a welcome upgrade, and especially to people who are building clusters. This will help out tremendously, but they're going to spend a lot more to build a supercomputer because these are now $75. And I actually saw a lot of people who were really bummed out when this was announced because they just picked up their first Raspberry Pi 4 4GB model or even the 2GB model. And to tell you the truth, this is not necessary for 99% of people. But if you want to run 32 Chrome tabs opened up, use Blender, edit multiple images at 8K in GIMP, and export a 1080p 60fps video at the same time, then the 8GB version is definitely the right choice for you. But for most people who already have the 2 or the 4, you can definitely get by with that. But there's one thing I will say here. If you don't already own a Raspberry Pi 4, I would definitely go for this one. In the long run, it's going to be your best bet. I know it's more expensive than the 2 or the 4 gigabyte model, but you're getting the top of the line unit from the Raspberry Pi Foundation. But that's pretty much it for this video. I really appreciate you watching. I will have a couple more videos on the Raspberry Pi 8 gigabyte model coming up. I'm going to figure out a few things that we can do here, and I'll show you how to set up a RAM disk. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments below. But like always, Thanks for watching.